and welcome back to another installment of Asagawa Academy Normal Boots Club, the Satch Bag Route. I'm your host, Sensei Pong. So, we were going to go to Satch to see if he needed help, and he said he really didn't, but it was obvious. He was very stressed, and a lot of things were gearing in his mind, so we'll see. But I think we've decided ourselves that we're going to try to help, even though, you know, we're going against the rule, no means no. <laughs> so let's go on. And there. Oh, and that was the cliffhanger right there. And there, right? And there what? We'll see. I snipped the blades of my scissors shut and small book-shaped cutout fell into my lap. I set it into a pile and rolled out my shoulders. Finally, four thick piles of multicolored construction paper sat neatly before me. My hands ached from cutting so much at once. I set the scissors aside and grabbed the permanent marker that sat on my desk, along with the cloud-shaped decorations I made earlier. Hannah. Hey, Hannah, I'm back. My face flushed and cheery as usual, bounded into the hey. room. How was practice? My went to the practice for the Asagao Strikers almost every evening. Their first big game was coming up, but it was at another school, so I wouldn't be able to go see her play. It bothered me a lot, but I was slightly relieved not to have to witness the pyre of burning rage that was my playing volleyball. It was fine, but I totally s struck Mimi in the, oh, what's all this? Oh, well, oh, but the, did she have it coming? My dropped her duffel bag in her chair. <laughs> That's terrible. In her chair, surveying the mass of paper spread out along the floor with myself at the center. <laughs> I didn't know we had to do arts and crafts here. I'm making flyers. Actually, would you mind helping me? I'll take me. It'll take me a, another few hours by myself. Of course. What are they for? She plopped herself on the floor and took up one of the stick figures I made. Some books have gone missing at the library, so I figured we could put up the flyers reminding people to turn their books on in on time. Oh, missing books. I tossed a few sheets of paper at her feet. Then uncapped the glue stick and stared attaching the images. Yeah, they've been missing since a few weeks ago, but now it's getting worse. But one of the books was just one I forgot to turn in, so I figured maybe that happened with all the books. Mai spiraled the stick figure in her hand so it looked like it was doing cartwheels. <laughs> they can look up who has late books in the system, you know. <laughs> yeah. But maybe it'll help, anyways. She grabbed a paper book and smeared glue all over the back. People do people do forget, so maybe half can be remembers, uh, reminders, and half can be lost and found notes. Yeah, okay. Together we worked through a pile of papers each. We compared handwriting and competed to see who could make the nicest flyer. I won, of course. It reminded me of car kindergarten, 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 and it was oddly comforting. We ran out of images of books, and I was just out, I was just handing May a permanent marker to start drawing them when she slapped her leg in the back of her hand. Um. Oh, shoot! I totally forgot. I left something in the gym. I should go get it. Okay, hurry back. Yeah, no problem. It's the boots. Odd. It wasn't like May to forget something. Usually she only forgot something when she wanted to copy my homework. Bum bum bum. As I started on the third pile, I began to feel distinctly sad. Why? My hand stilled on the paper, a memory stirring in my mind. That. Back in Ama Amarilisu, Amarilisu, my parents ran a shop together. My dad created beautiful works of art, pottery and ceramics. My mom filled them with the flowers she grew. He tried to teach me how to make pots, but I could never do it. I got too nervous seeing how easily one mistake could completely alter what you were making. Instead, see, there you go. Stalin. <laughs> Instead, one day he came to my room with a pile of papers. He folded them and in seconds a blue morning glory appeared in front of my eyes. How'd you do that? Smiling, he handed me purple paper and taught me how to fold a morning glory, step by step. When I finished, we sat them side by side. Mine was crumpled and stunted next to his crisp, beautiful creation. But he laughed. Separate, 
never would be considered beautiful. No, separate, never would be considered beautiful. I blinked. In front of me sat a blue morning glory, the cover of a book sticking out of one petal. Hmm. Slowly, I made my way through the pile of flyers and next to the... and then the next. The shadows grew longer and longer until they faded all together. When I finally finished, it was mu it was nine, and Mai still hadn't returned. Yeah. I'm done! I lay back on the floor, exhausted, and glanced at the clock. It shouldn't have taken her this long to get to the gym. Did she run into someone? I couldn't wait up for her. I had to get up early. I cleaned up, changed my pajamas, and crawled into my soft, cool sheets. Without my snoring, the room seemed intensely still, like the silence was still was trying to press itself into my skull. I hope she's okay. Suspicious. Unless something's wrong, then, you know. Should, should, should probably try to get in contact with her. The room blurred, and I drifted off to sleep. Dream sequence. Nope, no, nope, just kidding. Hmm. What? Ugh. What was happening? I couldn't see. My eyes wouldn't stay open. It's so late. My. She closed the door and tiptoed over to her desk. She was being so damn loud. I turned over, vaguely angry. Too tired. Want to sleep. Rustling of paper echoed from her side of the room. <sighs> Quiet. A drawer shut. My climbed up to her bed and the mattress over my head sagged. I glanced at the clock. It was past midnight. She only just got back? Something seemed wrong. School wasn't in session right now. What? It's past curfew. So, my assumption is that she's selling under um, underground contrabands. I couldn't think straight. My head hit the pillow and I turned over, drifting off to sleep again. She's a klepto. She's selling uh, stolen watches <laughs> out of a trench coat. Nice and stared <laughs> Bright and early next morning, I scurried through the hall, searching for Satch. I had to catch him before he went to class. There was no way I could show my face in the senior's classroom with everyone still hating me. I turned a corner and was confronted with a flash of bright yellow. Hey! Hey, Hannah, what are you up to? Caddy stood in front of me, his head tilted to one side. I didn't know him too well. In fact, this is probably the first time we ever spoke on our own. Hey! Hey, Caddy. Have you seen Satch? I think he was up a, up a floor. Something wrong. Yar. Nope. I made these flyers and I want to give them to him. I nodded to, at the pile of papers I was holding. They were nearly as tall as my torso. Caddy blinked, as if seeing them for the first time. Yar. He smiled weakly. I paused. Um, Is something wrong? He shoved his hands into his jacket pockets and glanced around the hall. I, now, I wouldn't say something's wrong, per se, Govna. He trailed off, but didn't volunteer any information. Uh, Is it about the tournament? In a way, you could say that. He cast his eyes at the floor. Now, things wouldn't suddenly don't look good, too good for us, I say, I say. That's too bad. He looked truly sad, but try as I might, I couldn't hide my glee. Evil. He looked at me in surprise, then a sharp gleam entered his eyes. <laughs> now don't go thinking this, it's in the bag yet, Miss Mizuno. We'll give you the right run for your money. <laughs> if you say so. Giggling madly, I scurried past him and up a staircase. My fingers were starting to cramp. It wasn't that the flyers were particularly heavy, though they were by no means light. But they were horribly awkward to carry, especially up staircases. I pushed a staircase door open with my back and entered the third floor. From across the empty hallway, I saw a familiar figure standing in front of an open locker. Good morning. Aha! Hey, girl. <laughs> oh, I love I love these sound bites. Hana! I dashed to Satch and dropped a pile of flyers in front of him, heaving. Perhaps running, running up those stairs wasn't such a bright idea. What's going on? 
Now what brings you up here so early? Look! I took a flyer and shoved it into his face. He stepped back and peered at the writing. <laughs> mm. Be a good date. Don't turn your books in late. What is this? Well... I made flyers to help you search for the missing books. I didn't want you to keep working on this alone, so... Hana. Oh, Hana. He cringed, scratching the back of his neck. That's great, but I don't know that the librarian would be happy with these. She'll think that they highlight what a terrible job, job she's doing. Uh... Oh. I stared at the stack of flyers on the floor, stretching my hands to ease their stiffness. Still, he leaned down and flipped through the sheets. What? Did you make all these by yourself? Yeah, last night. My helped me too. Your handwriting is really nice. Thank you. My hand got tired at the end, though, so I'm not sure if the ones at the bottom are any good. Hmm. Hmm. He straightened and stretched, then stood for a while looking at the out the window. Um. Um, you know, I bet I can find something to do with them after all. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, we can we can start up another bonfire. Now, if we use them right, they might even reduce the library workload. Happiness bloomed to my chest. Yay! That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much, Hannah. Really, it means a lot. <laughs> I had to do something to help you. He smiled and reached a hand towards me, as if to ruffle my hair, but stopped mid-gesture and instead turned back to his locker. Well, I need to get back to class early today, so I'll be seeing See you. See you later. Right. Well, have a good day. Copacetic. <laughs> I will. You too, Hannah. Make it copacetic. I didn't say that right. <laughs> Nothing that comes out of my mouth ever sounds cool. And despite having large bits of random information on seemingly specific topics in geography and squirrels, I can never sound intellectual. Except for that one review of Depression Quest I did. Apparently that's like... Here, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a tech card. Apparently somebody commented on my uh, review for Depression Quest where it was like... It wasn't just somebody ranting mad, it was actually a nice objective look as a interactive fiction gamer. I thought the game was crap. Spoiler alert. It was the writing that I had an issue with, and the character progression, and the interaction, interactive fiction part of it. But it, it's, it was like a telltale game. It all like branches out, and then all comes back into one little point. Not like this, where, you know, you got like, literally 43 different branches all going into different directions. He took the stack of flyers and put them in his locker. Then he left for a classroom further down the hall. As I watched the door close, I realized he hadn't been distant all this time. With a heart lighter than it was in days, I skipped down the stairs and headed into my class. Time to make up the homework I didn't do last night. It was only a few minutes before my exhaustion began to hit me. I did not handle lack of sleep well either. I quickly grew grumpy and irritable. My, recognizing this form and all-nighter I pulled a, to write an essay a few weeks ago, gave me some space. Aside from that, class went and just as expected. The normal boots boys avoided my eyes the entire period, ex excepting the occasional vomit-inducing glance from Shane. He seemed to be taking the situation much more seriously than the rest of them, and I had no idea why. I, I never did anything to him, but for some reason he never... He was never fond of me, or my hair. We know why. Just kind of sad. I was a little closer to John and PBG though. I expected at least polite contact with them, but it seemed difficult for them to even look at me. Pubaga especially seemed to be taking it hard. He was a kind soul, and I didn't think he was, he'd be able to continue isolating Mai and me if he didn't have the others to support him. As it was, any time I accidentally crossed paths with him, he seemed to be fighting the inter an internal battle. Flickers of emotion would pass across his face. Regret, sadness, disbelief. So of course he ended up turning around and heading back from whence he came. He'd been late to class several times. Shouldn't they know me better than this? Shouldn't they know I wouldn't do something like that to them? But what did really have in what did we really have in common? 
a shared school, a tournament, the possibility of a shared hobby. Friendship meant different things to different people. To me, they were still my friends, but I guess to them... I was jolted back into reality as the bell rang. The chaotic shuffling and chatter of students filled the room in the rush of rush to leave for lunch. Papa Gud, John, and Shane left the room faster than I thought humanely possible. Any hopes I had walking to lunch together vanished with them. Guess they didn't want to be in my presence any more than they had to be. Sighing, I zipped my bag shut, and I felt a hand on my shoulder. Luke and Ian stood behind me, gazing at me in sympathy. Oh. At least, Luke seemed sympathetic. Ian was, well, Ian was being Ian. It was hard to tell what he was feeling with a face as impassive and disdainful as his. Hey. What's with the long, what's with the long face? Do you really have to ask? No, I guess not. I shouldered my bag in the silence that followed. I wasn't sure whether there was a point to the conversation. I just wanted to leave. You know, you don't need to worry. I resisted the urge to roll my eyes. Don't I? <laughs> the Normal Boots Club are great people. Great people who drop me at the first sign of trouble. Look, I believe you're innocent, and because of that, I know they'll recognize it too. Oh, thanks. Thanks, young town. You're my hero. <laughs> Just give them time. I mean, they can't all be smart as me. <laughs> he grinned like a proud school kid. How do you know I'm innocent? <laughs> Luke laughed. He turned to Ian, who grimaced. <laughs> it's time to go. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Luke followed Ian out of the room, whistling. <laughs> I don't know who is weirder out there. Uh, who is the weirder out of those two? I guess it doesn't matter, does it? They're both pretty hot. <laughs> is that all you think about? Bingo. Hey, I gotta do something to keep my spirits up in these dark times. And dark times call for drastic measures. I shook my head. Let's get going. Maybe they'll have a lobster for lunch again. Yeah! <laughs> I sure hope so. What kind of school serves lobster? Holy balls. You know how expensive that would be to feed, like, even a small school of 500 students lobster? Reasonably, the school, I'm assuming, has a population of at least 500. I can easily see maybe a thousand. Well, it is a private school, so let's let's go on, let's go mid-range and say 750. I'm trying to think of what the cheapest, cheapest, uh, cheapest, cheapest lobster dish would be, and probably making a lobster bisque, because all you really need is a few lobsters to make a few pots. I suppose that's doable. But if everybody got lobster tail, let's do the math. I used to work at a fish market. This this is the only reason why it's interesting to me. I'm coming out with a number about that's having a lobster lunch for a school this size. Doing lobster bisque would cost about $250 just for the lobster. That's an estimate. That's still pretty expensive for a school lunch. I sure hope so. Man, that was the most pointless tangent. My tangents are so pointless sometimes. We just came out of pop. <laughs> I just realized I wasted like seven minutes calculating lobster. This is going to bother me. Okay, we know how many lobsters it will take. So let's actually look up the price of lobster tail. Wow. Ten ninety nine a pound. Prices have kind of gone up. Right, so I'm gonna have to redo this. Okay, just kidding. A lobster lunch will probably cost around six hundred, uh, six hundred to seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Most pointless. I, I okay. So I realized I wasted like ten minutes recording. Calculating lobster prices for a school lunch. That's expensive. <laughs> Budget cuts. 
Sorry, sorry, John. We had to cut the drama department because we had to fund the lobster lunch. <laughs> what? How much did it cost? It cost us 700 bucks to make that lunch. We just made... And that's the lobster alone, so... We just came out of Poppy Hall when mice stopped dead in her tracks. Oh, shoot! What's wrong? I forgot my lunch money. Would you mind waiting here? I'm going to run back and get it. That's okay. I have more than enough for both of us. Really? Really? Is it okay if I mooch off you? Yeah. Sure. Mai jumped to my side. Give me a great big hug. Hana, you're the greatest. I promise I'll pay you back. You better. It wasn't like I could afford to be giving people handouts, especially not for Asuka's crazy expensive food. Come on, let's go. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you a secret in return. Uh-oh. What's that? Once, I saw Jeff shoving hamsters with helmets on them into tiny little cannons. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, Je um, Jeff, uh, aka Space Hamster, I'm not sure if he still has hamsters, but he did he did have hamsters in his early videos. Mm -hmm. He was trying to shoot them off into space. I mean, creeps found him in time, in time to stop him. I think he might have kept the hamsters too. Thank goodness. Uh, Maybe. I think I'd rather uh, I'd rather death by cannon than go home with creeps. Uh, you have a point there. And now you know why Jeff's called Space Hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to lunch while I have I still have my appetite. Deal. We waited in line for our food, conscious of several stairs shooting in our direction. <laughs> Ignore them. Look. We get strawberry shortcake today. Mm. Yeah, great. I hated being stared at. We gathered food on our trays and began the slow walk to the back of the cafeteria where our table was now located. Why did the normal boots club sit in the middle of the cafeteria? We had to walk past them, and everyone was watching. I tried to concentrate on the smell of strawberries and ham, wafting from my tray, but only found myself thinking of Gerard's clone. Uh, Jared's clone. Ugh, get a grip. As we trudged past them, Mai nudged at me and smiled in their direction. Da ba da ba da. No one was looking. They were all suddenly engrossed in their chopsticks and spoons. Everyone except Satch. Oh. Just before we made it to our table, something caught my attention. Jeff was smiling and waving at us. After a pause, the rest of the Hidden Block Club joined in. Oh. Oh, well that's nice. Maya and I smiled and waved in return, and sat down in, at our table with lifted spirits. Neither of us looked at, at, at the other, but we were thinking the same thing. The Normal Boots Club wasn't the center of the universe, and really, why did we expect anything different from them? So, you know, I've been thinking. <laughs> That's a bad sign. <laughs> Rude. Why do you think... You know, who do you think would take the, the boots, and why? The Normal Boots Club is almost universally beloved. Why is that anyways? Uh, They're a group of crazy hot men surrounded by pubescent girls. You do the math. Right, got it. Well, Maybe they have a crazy fan that took it then. She wanted to get their attention. I don't know. Seems an odd way to do it. They'd hate you afterwards. They say the opposite of love is indifference, not hatred. No, there has to be something in it for them. You don't think the Hidden Block Club? Oh, <gasps> bum bum bum. We glanced over at their table. Hmm? Arr. We waved at them. KV beamed and waved back. Dot a dot a dot. Ian rolled his eyes. Well... I, th I thought it was them at first, but now I don't think so. They're a lot nicer than I thought they were. Yeah. I agree. There's no way they'd do it. Plus, the normal boots guys are their friends. And the boots were locked up. Someone had to get access when no one was looking. A school official? You think? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the librarian hates everyone in our school, and Satch in particular. And plus, there's that creepy nurse. <gasps> Ugh. Ugh, I forgot about him. Why does he wear that mask? Oh. I heard he killed his cat, and now he thinks his soul, uh, its soul is inside it. Pika Pika. 
He wouldn't have killed a cat, would he? <laughs> Rumor has it, if you take the mask away from him, half his face is burned. What? From what? Ex-wife tried to kill him. <laughs> I can sympathize. But, things I'm not legally allowed to loll about. He glanced in our direction. We snapped our attention back to our food. Okay, let's just pretend it's not him. There's no way I can face that guy. Who has a motive in hurting the Normal Boots Club? Uh -huh. We do. Well, now we do, not then. Well, now we do, not then. What about... A clatter rang out and a hush fell across the cafeteria. Muffled, angry voices came from the middle of the room. Shane and Satch seemed to be having some sort of disagreement. Oh, snap. And actually, this is a great point to cut off. A nice little cliffhanger. Something's going down with Southern Charm Shane <laughs> and Satch Bag. And we'll have to see what it is next time here on Sensei Pong Pong Plays. Asagao Academy, Normal Boots Club, the Satch Bag Route. So, stay tuned. Sensei Pong signing out. Like and subscribe. Man, I'm looking at the clock right now and I, I'm, I'm hoping that me really like diving into the prices of lobster and estimating how much lobster it would take to feed a high school and with making it like just stretching a lobster as far as you can with a bisque isn't messing up my time recording here because it's it's a lot longer than I normally go but at the same time I'm not sure how long I thought about lobster ain't nobody got time for that